What's up guys, it's JTB Game here, and today we have the 11th episode of Grimsby Town Road to Glory. And to start this episode off, we're going to look at our Youth Academy. Our first scout will be going to New Zealand for, to find some defensive-minded players. Our second scout will be going to Australia to find any players. And our third scout will be going to the United States to find some playmakers for six months. Looking at the team, we are now a 4.5 star team as we have a 79 rated offense, an 82 rated midfield, and an 81 rated defense. This is the team that I'm looking to go with at the start of the season. We will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. We'll have Campbell and goal, Stewart at right back, Pollock and Rafferty at center backs, Cucurella at left back, Sibley and Adams at defensive mids, McNamee at right mid, Lookman at left mid, Wolf at attacking mid, and Taylor up top. We did have one of our backup players, Keith McDonald, suffer a broken collarbone injury in the preseason, and he will be out for the next eight weeks. We now have the start of our little bit of transfer news before the beginning of the season. And the first of that is we have sold Tomas Moldando to Advolsi for $720,000. One player that I have signed from the free agents list is Jesus Crespo Preto. He is a goalkeeper that could have potential to be good for us as we currently only have two goalkeepers. Preto is showing great potential, so it was a good decision to buy him as he could be our third string goalkeeper for a long time. One player we've sold is Colm Hennessy. He'll be joining Watford for $15.9 million. Pierce Cavanaugh will also be leaving the team for $1.6 million to join CFR 1907 Kluge. Now we have some Youth Academy news as Ramiro Vera will be joining the first team. He's a defensive minded defensive mid from Uruguay who is six foot four with and he is a 63 overall with a potential of 72 to 94. Vera is an exciting prospect, so we will be keeping him around as as we look to develop him. Edson Reese is another player I'm promoting. He is a technically gifted center forward from Brazil who is 5'9". He is a 61 overall with a potential of 73 to 87. Reese is only showing great potential, so I will be looking to sell him. Esteban Gerardo is another player I'm promoting. He is an attacking, attacking mid from Argentina. He is a 61 overall with a potential of 68 to 88. Gerardo is only showing great potential, so I will also be looking to sell him. Sergio Vialba will also be joining the team. He is a defensive-minded right back from Uruguay, who is 6'2", with a 60 overall and a potential 74 to 94. Vialba is an exciting prospect, and he can play right back, left back, or center back, so he definitely will be kept around. We now get into our first game of the season as we travel to Wembley Stadium to face Manchester City in the Community Shield. For this first game of the season, I will be using that 4-2-3-1. Manchester City will be lining up in their 4-3-3 holding. They do have some very good players as they still have Ederson, Laporte, and Raheem Sterling. So we definitely going to have to watch out for their overall talent. In the 8th minute, Manchester City have the ball in our half. Archer plays it out wide to Angelino. Angelino lays it across. Campbell clears it but can't collect it. And it's Manchester City go up 1 0 in the 9th minute. In the 15th minute, Cucurella crosses the ball into the box. Rafferty is able to put the header into the back of the net to tie the game up at 1 to 1, 15 minutes in. In the 40th minute, Cucurella has the ball in the area. He attempts to play it out wide to McNamee. McNamee then loses the ball for Manchester City, capitalize on the mistake, and are eventually able to put the ball into the back of the net to put us down 2 to 1 in entering the 41st minute. In the 45th minute, Wolf gets the ball, he beats one defender, he gets into the box, he is able to turn, beat two more defenders before he smashes it near post to tie the game up at 2-2 two to two and stop its time in the first half. In the 68th minute, Wolf plays the ball through to Taylor. Taylor uses his pace to get around the first defender before he lays it across for Lookman as Lookman is comfortably able to put it into the back of the net to put us up 3-2 to two in the 69th minute. At full time, we would go on to win 3-2 thanks to a goal from Rafferty, Wolf, and Lookman. Our players will now line up to lift the trophy as we are able to win the Community Shield and get our first piece of silverware this season. Hopefully this will not be our last. However, it is a very long season and some things could happen. As Sibley, our captain, lifts the trophy as we are FA Community Shield champions. After that Community Shield win, we have some transfer news, and I've sold George Sullivan to Independiente for $5.6 million.
I have also sold Louis Sibley to Bournemouth for $34.5 million. We now have our first Premier League game of the season as we travel to face Watford at the Vicarage Road. Watford will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. They do have some very good players in Lamar and Rebio, so we are going to have to watch out for this as it could be a challenging game. For this game, I will continue to use that 4-2-3-1. The only change we've made is since Sibley has been sold, I've put McNamee at left defensive mid, and I've put Crow in at right wing. In the 19th minute, Watford had the ball in our box. They pass it back to build around. Lamar then gets the ball in the box. Pollock blocks the first shot, but he, we cannot clear the second shot as Watford score to put them up 1-0 in the 20th minute. We have the ball in a dangerous area in the 36th minute as McNamee plays it out to Adams. Adams plays it into Taylor. Taylor turns the defender before he smashes it past the goalkeeper to tie the game up at 1-1 in the 37th minute. In the 87th minute, McNamee has the ball in Watford's box. He plays it back to Morrison. Morrison's first shot does not go. Taylor's shot does not go. Morrison is able to get the rebound and put the ball into the back of the net to put us up 2-1 in the 88th minute. In stoppage time of the second half, Watford have a free kick in a dangerous area and Lamar converts it to tie the game up at 2-2 in stoppage time of the second half. At full time, we would end up drawing 2-2. This definitely was a game that we should have won, but we didn't. Have a little bit transfer news as John Brady will be joining Yeti Malton Spohr for $1.4 million. Esteban Gerardo will be departing the club as he will be joining Sepsi OSK for $610,000. Jamie Durati will also be departing the club as he will be joining Preston for $2.6 million. One player that I have signed for $6 million from AC Milan is Sanchez Correa. He could possibly be Ronaldo's regen, so he could be a future star for us. One player I have signed from Nantes with a release clause is Imra Luza. He is valued at $35 million, but we were able to get him for $13.2 million thanks to his release clause. I have also gone on to buy Daniel Rugiani from Juventus for $36.3 million. I also went on to sign Eric Bailly for $29 million. With the signing of Rugiani and Bailly means that there's not room for Pollock and he'll be joining Frankfurt on a two-year loan. Rafferty will also be departing as he'll be joining on a short loan to FC Bayern once the transfer, next transfer window opens. We have been drawn in Group G of the Europa League. This definitely is a group we should easily win, as we've been drawn with Belgian side RC Anderlecht, Turkish side Bashiktir, and Norwegian side Mold FK. And speaking of the Europa League, we get into the first game, as we will be facing Mold FK at the Acker Stadion. Mold will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. For this game, I've decided to switch us to a 4-3-3 holding, as we will have Campbell and Goal, Stewart at right back, Bailly and Rugiani at center backs, Cucurella at left back, Adams at defensive mid, Wolf and Luza at center mids, McNamee at right wing, Lookman at left wing, with Taylor at striker. In the 17th minute, Stewart has the ball. He plays it into Taylor. Taylor plays it through to Luza before Luza puts it past the keeper to put us up 1 0 in the 18th minute. At full time, that, or that goal by Luza in the 18th minute would be the only goal as we win our first game 1 0. We now have a big game in the Carabao Cup as we host Spurs at the Bundell Park. I have not made any changes to the starting lineup from that Europa League game against Mold. Spurs will be lining up in a 4-3-1. They are not playing their best 11, so we should easily win this game. In the fourth minute, Wolf picks up the ball. He's able to beat one defender. He is tackled, but he keeps going. He's able to drop another defender before he dribbles into the box. And he puts it past the goalkeeper to put us up 1-0 in the 5th minute thanks to that solo run. In the 35th minute, Spurs have the ball in a dangerous area. Bailly goes to step to the ball, but he can't get there in time. Ruggiani then looks to step before the Spurs player gets free and puts it into the back of the net to put the score at 1-1 in the 36th minute. In stoppage time of the first half, McNamee has the ball in a dangerous area. He plays it into Wolf. Wolf plays Luza. Luza plays it back to Wolf. Wolf crosses it back post to Lookman, who puts it into the back of the net to put us up 2-1 in stoppage time of the first half. In the 59th minute, Spurs have the ball in a very dangerous area as their player gets open on the wing. He cuts it back. The first attempt is blocked by Campbell, but the second is not, as Spurs tie the game up at 2-2 in the 60th minute. 
In the 66th minute, Taylor has the ball. He holds it up before he's able to get past the first defender. He goes to shoot, but his first attempt is blocked, but Luza is able to volley it into the back of the net to put us up 3-2 in the 67th minute. In the 83rd minute, Luckman turns the ball over in a bad area. Spurs now are looking to counterattack us. The ball gets played out wide. Stewart then goes in for the slide tackle, and he fouls the player. And it does appear that he will be receiving a second yellow and being sent off, which is the case. I personally think that he got the ball first. However, this could be bad for us as it is late in the game, and we are now currently down to 10 men. At full time, we would be able to hold on as we beat Spurs 3-2 thanks to goals from Wolf, Lookman, and Luza. We have some really bad news as our starting goalkeeper Oliver Campbell has torn his MCL and he's going to be out for the next two months. However, Peterson, our backup, is good, but he is no Campbell. I'm now going to be promoting a couple of youth players for the first team, and the first of which is Alvaro Castaneda. He is a attacking left wing from Argentina who is six foot two. He is a 60 overall with a potential of 86 to 92. Castaneda is an exciting prospect, and he can play left wing or attacking mid, so I definitely will keep him around as he is also very physically built. Russell Campbell will also be joining the team as he is a playmaking attacking mid from the United States. He is a 62 overall with a potential of 73 to 91. Campbell is showing great potential, so I will be looking to sell him. Another player that I am promoting is Billy Cooper. He is a defensive-minded left back from Australia who is 5'8". He is a 60 overall with the potential of 71 to 94. Cooper is an exciting prospect, and he can play left back, center back, or right back, so I will look to keep him around. Chao Gomez will also be joining the team as he is an attacking left wing from Brazil who is a 60 overall and has a potential of 79 to 87. Gomez is only showing great potential, so I will look to sell him. We've gotten some more bad news as Keith McDonald is again out for 8 weeks, but this time he has torn his quadricep. We have gotten some really good news as we have gone on to win Manager of the Month in the month of November for the Premier League. We now have a game in the Europa League as we will be facing RSC Anderlecht at the Constant Vanden Stockstad. Anderlecht will be lining up in a 4-3 attack. We are going to have to watch out for Zakaria Bakili. For this game, I will be playing the backups, and so we will have Crespo, Prito, in goal, Vera at right back, Mitchell and Clark at center backs, Evans at left back, Jackson at defensive mid, Morgan and Morrison at center mids, Ngochi at right wing, Crow at left wing, with Sanchez Correa up top. In the fourth minute, Morrison plays the ball out wide to Evans. Evans then cuts it back in as he plays just plays Sanchez Correa. He uses his speed and skill to get past the first defender, for he's taken down in the box in the 5th minute by Murillo. Murillo ends up receiving a yellow card for that challenge, as we now have a chance to capitalize on a penalty very early on in the game. As you see from this challenge, he never got anywhere near the ball, and it was a good job by Sanchez Correa to get in the box. Crow will be the one to step up to take the penalty for us, as we look to get the very early lead. Crow will look to put the ball into the top left corner. He steps up to take it. The keeper doesn't move as he puts it into the back of the net as we are now up 1-0 in the 6th minute. In the 45th minute, Morrison has the ball in the dangerous area. He plays into Sanchez Correa. Correa plays it into Morgan. Morgan gets past the defender before putting it past the goalkeeper to put us up 2-0 in stoppage time of the first half. At full time, we would go on to win 2-0 thanks to that penalty from Crow and that goal from Morgan. We now have a little bit more Youth Academy news. And the first player I'm promoting at this moment is George Bliska. He is a playmaking center mid from the United States. He is a 61 overall with a potential of 77 to 94. An absolutely pleasant surprise is that Bliska has potential to be special, so I will keep a close eye on him as he will definitely be a good player for us in the long run. Another player I'm promoting is Harvey Baker. He is a physically strong left back who is a 60 overall and has the potential of 78 to 94. Baker is an exciting prospect, and he can play left back or right back, so I might keep him around, but I'm not sure yet. Another player I'm promoting is Ali Evans. He is a defensive-minded left back with, who is a 63 overall and has a potential of 69 to 93. Evans is only showing great potential, so I will look to sell him. We now have the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup as we travel to face Crystal Palace at the Selhurst Park. 
Crystal Palace will be lining up in a 4-5-1, and to be honest, I do not recognize any of these players, so it should be an easy win for us. For this game, we will be lining up in that 4-3-3 holding. The only change we've made from our strongest 11 is Peterson is in for Campbell, as Campbell is out injured right now. In the 63rd minute, the ball is played out wide to Stewart. Stewart plays it into Sanchez Correa, who plays Luza, who gets into their box. He turns around the defender before he is taken down in the box as we earn a penalty in the 64th minute. It was a very good job by Luza to get in the box and draw the foul, as we now have a chance to get the first goal of the game. Crystal Palace now make a substitution before the penalty. You step up and take the penalty is Taylor, as he will look to put it into the bottom left corner. He steps up, sends the keeper the wrong way, and converts the penalty to put us up 1-0 in the 64th minute. In the 66th minute, right after we scored that penalty, Crystal Palace are now looking to attack us and respond. The ball is played back to one of their players. Sanchez Correa intercepts the ball brilliantly before he plays it into Taylor. Taylor is then one-on-one -on -one with the center back before he cuts it back and plays it through to Lokman and Lokman is able to convert his shot into the goal to put us up 2 to nothing in the 68th minute. In the 77th minute, the Crystal Palace are able to get the ball in behind the defense. Ruggiani loses his man before their player puts it into the back of the net to make the score now 2 to 1 in the 78th minute. At full time, we would be able to hold on as we beat Crystal Palace 2 to 1 thanks to that penalty from Taylor and that goal from Lokman. We have just gotten some very bad news as Wolf has torn his LCL and he is going to be out for the next three months. To add to that bad news, Eric Bailly has also torn his LCL, and he is going to be out for two months. Currently in the league, we are in sixth place. We are two points off of Europa League spot and four points off of a Champions League spot, which I expect us to hopefully get. In the FA Cup, we have not played any games yet, but our first game will be against Crystal Palace, who we just beat in the Carabao Cup in the third round. In the Carabao Cup, we did make it to the semifinals, and we will be facing Aston Villa. In the Europa League, we would go on to win every game in our group, finishing with 18 points, and Anderlecht came in second. In the round of 32, we will be facing FC Basel. I think we could be able to win that tie easily. However, I do not know the state of their team. I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you want to check out the rest of this series, you can check it out on my channel. And the shape to be gaming, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.